Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and yes, indeed, the people or the community and Rolling Solo have spoken. And you guys overwhelmingly let me know in the last video for ISS Vanguard that you wanted to see this thing on the table and in action based on some of the major changes that have happened. And that's exactly what I intend to do here. I really went over the changes that AR has gone ahead and implemented for ISS Vanguard. And one of those is around that new starting experience and not putting so many rules into the first two phases of the game so they've broken it out into multiple iterations to layer the learning on and not drown you in it so it's going to start off with the first planetary exploration which will introduce basic movement and rolls in other words all the die rolling that goes into this one the next phase would be a ship phase of course which would introduce only several of the core shipbook pages but not everything. And then we'd be going through a second planet phase, then a second ship phase, and then a third planet phase. By then you've gone through all five of the tutorials and you'll have all that learning in. Now for the purposes of this playthrough, I won't be doing all five. However, there is a genuine interest in the community in seeing how things are learned and how things are set up from the beginning. And so that's what I'm aiming to cover in these videos. The other three, you'll have to discover those ones once the game arrives. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dig into the ISS Vanguard logbook and read a little bit about some of the narrative behind this first planetary exploration. And then we're gonna dive into what we need to do to set up for it. The first thing states here, Captain Wayman is saying, Good morning, crew. If you're hearing this, it means you belong to a small group of essential personnel waking up in the first wave. Let me bring you up to speed. For the last two years, Vanguard has been cruising safely to our destination, following alien coordinates to the main objective of our mission. Five days ago, we switched off the drive and dropped below light speed. You might feel a bit heavy on the main deck. Gravitational compensators keep deceleration down to a slightly uncomfortable 2G. The red zones on the ship are locked and off limits unless you want to experience what 90G feels like, that is. We are now approaching our target. So far, sensors aren't picking up anything, but don't let that get you down. We're still a ways off and... A main alert starts to trigger. Vanguard's AI states, collision course alert, action required. And the captain states, report, what's going on? The chief, Chief Navigator Neal says, sir, we're detecting a massive cloaked object directly in our path. The calculations show we're three weeks from impact. The captain says, begin evasive maneuvers. The chief states, sir, this ob object is several times larger than the entire solar system, a diameter of almost 200 astronomical units. Considering our current speed, I'm not sure we'll be able to adjust the course in time. The captain says, how would we miss something this big? The chief says, the object employs some active cloaking technology and does not seem to have any gravitational interactions with nearby systems. The captain says, Sergeant, are you the section leaders awake? The sergeant says, yes, sir. The captain states, send them to me and lock down the bridge. Not a word of this to anyone. We don't want to cause panic on board. At this point, the logbook states, welcome to ISS Vanguard. This campaign begins with some simplified planetary explorations and ship phases designed to introduce you to all the rules and components of the game. This scripted planetary exploration tutorial is shorter and more streamlined than the landings you will perform during the campaign. This tutorial focuses on the basics and the basics are how to play on the planet board you're seeing there in front of you. We'll be opening that up and setting up very soon. How to perform basic roles and move them around. How to use points points of interest cards, how to navigate the logbook. And we are now going to jump right into setting some things up. So let's first grab everything the logbook asks for. The very first thing we need to do is find the awaiting pocket and place its contents on the table. So I've got them right here. We're going to open them up and start digging through them very, very soon. But there's still a couple other things we need to grab. We're also going to require the four crew trays and we're going to need some section compartment boxes. Now, I don't have the original prototype shell boxes anymore, so I'll just be keeping those off camera. But as you saw, likely through updates on the GameFound page, as well as 
pictures, there are some very nice section boxes for each of the four where all the contents will stay inside of things like dice, dividers, and cards. We obviously need the Planetopedia book as well, and we need to get all of our tokens in order. Just like that, we've now gathered everything we need in terms of preparation to set up. We can now move into actually choosing and setting up the sections. In this step, each player is going to choose a section to lead throughout the campaign. Now, if you're playing solo, you're going to have and be able to use any of the four sections. Just remember, when you head to a planet, you must control two characters when playing solo. You don't have to control all four of the sections, so you will have to strategically decide which sections you want to bring to the planet as a solo player. Not only do you want to become familiar with the actual boards themselves as as well as any writing on them, you're also going to want to go ahead and make sure you grab the section boxes that I talked about, those shell boxes. You're going to make sure that you have the contents that should go inside of them. That's going to be dice, crew members, and any dividers. We'll be talking a little bit more about this as we go along as well. In regards to the dividers, when you have your section box or section compartment, make sure that in each of them you have these dividers inside. Available crew members, section deck, section cards, rank sleeves, and resting crew members. So to make this easy, picture in your mind that we have these dividers available for each of the four sections. The next step is to find the nine rank cards for each of the sections and then place them behind the rank sleeves divider in each of their section boxes. Vanguard, this is away team. We are en route to the designated landing zone. All systems nominal, uplink stable. We should be past the outer debris layer right about... Wow! My god! You see this, Vanguard? Crystal clear away, team. Seems like long-range scans were right. The planet is gone. If you see no clear approach vector, you have permission to abort. No. Some pieces of the crust look large enough for a touchdown, and we detect anomalous structures among the debris. We could take a look. Anything you can bring back from there will be invaluable, away team. Just be careful not to bite off more than you can chew. There are plenty of other worlds on our list. Copy that, Vanguard. Plotting the landing path. At this point, we are going to prepare the away team. We unpack the large tutorial deck. This is a deck of 43 standard size cards that came inside that awaiting bag you saw earlier in the video. We're now going to go ahead and remove this card from the game. There is a divider that you'll place cards that are removed from the game behind. This one's going there, and it reveals crew member cards. There should be a total of four crew member cards. So we're going to pull all of those off, and we're going to reveal them. The four crew members revealed are Raikou, Amir, Jop, and Cho, and each of them are going to be preset to one of the sections, starting with security, then science, recon, and engineering in order. So the next thing you need to do is grab a rank one sleeve for each of these based on those sections. Just like that, the rank one sleeves are on, and if you flip them over, you will see the section they relate to. At this point, we're now going to take the crew members that we got as rank number one and slot them into each of the crew dashboards. The only thing is, I'm playing solo, so when playing solo, I'm not slotting all four of them into their dashboards. I'm choosing at this point in time which of the crew members are going to be going down to the planet, and I'm bringing just two. So I've decided to bring science and recon. I think these are the two that make the most sense for me at this point. You might think I'm blindly choosing you'd be correct. In the first tutorial ones, there's not going to be much information given to you as to which ones you should choose section-wise if you are playing solo, but I will tell you as the campaign goes on and you learn more about the planets as well as your objectives, as well as having differing ranks and abilities across different crew members, there is going to be some strategic choices as to who you bring to the planet and what they can and can't do when they get there. That is definitely going to be a major tie-in for solo players. So going into this one, I think if I'm exploring a brand new planet, something I'm not familiar with, science and recon, it just makes sense. I've gone ahead and placed the two crew members for the two sections that I want to bring to the planet in their dashboards. The other two character cards are going to go into their respective section boxes behind the available crew members divider. 
Next up, I get to choose the models to represent the crew members in the mission, and there are two body types available for each section. I've gone ahead and selected them. You're going to remember these individuals because these are the same sections I chose in the original playthrough. A big difference, though, is that this time I'm going to be going ahead and using the standees instead of the miniatures. The next step is to find that awaiting bag. Remember the one that had the standard size cards in it as well as the smaller size cards? Well, we're focused on that smaller tutorial deck now. I've gone ahead and pulled it out. We're now going to go ahead and remove the top card off of it. It states this side up. We're taking it away. That's going to go behind the removed divider. Now we have four rank up cards that are going to be underneath of this. Now if we were controlling four characters, we'd be placing one of these rank up cards on each of the four characters, but as we only have two, I'll just be placing one under each of them at random. At this point, each player would secretly familiarize themselves with the rank-up cards that they have, and once they understand them, place them face down again next to their character board. Again, they're just for each of the players. Now, when I'm playing solo and controlling two characters going down to this planetary exploration phase, I've got these two rank-up cards, and it's A-OK -okay for me to look at both of them and be gunning to try and complete both to be able to help rank up later on. So we're actually going to take a look at these right now. So the rank-up card for Amir here states, check at the end of the planetary exploration in the tutorial to gain a new rank after this tutorial mission, you should have at least three success tokens at the end of the mission. Reveal this card when you do to show other players that you have fulfilled your rank up requirements. And there you go. Now, if I look at this one over here, we'll see if it's similar and I wouldn't be surprised if it is. It is. And that's a okay. Now these rank up cards are going to change. They're not always going to be the same, but for tutorial purposes, it's keeping things quite simplistic. We're now instructed to check out log number five in the app or in the logbook, and you can either read with your own voice straight from the logbook that narrative, or you can consume it inside the app with voice acting as well as special effects and music if you so choose. And you can turn some of those features on and off at your own will. However, log five is currently not inside of the ISS Vanguard app at the moment, so I'll be going ahead and reading it. The log makes note of engine noise occurring. The away team operative one states, Capcom, this is the away team. We are approaching the target. Our short range scans detect an outer shell of unknown carbon altrope that seems to absorb all emissions. We have no way of knowing what's inside. Sergeant Vanguard states, we're already crunching your data, away team. I'll let you know if we find anything. Operative two of the away team states, no wonder we couldn't detect this thing. It was literally built to be invisible. Operative one, should we attempt a landing? Sergeant Vanguard states, no, we're not sure how resilient the structure is. Make a closer flyby and deploy a sample gathering drone. The away team operative one says, Roger Vanguard, we are, and there's a scanning sound going on. Away team two, operative two says, wait, I'm detecting something on the surface of the sphere, a metallic object embedded in its shell. Look here, the surface around it is cracked almost as if it's crashed into it's turning towards us, and then there's a loud bang, and the lander sends off an alert. Away Team 2, Operative 2 says, We're hit! It's shooting at us! It's some sort of automated sentry anchored on the sphere. Sergeant Vanguard states, Abort! Do you copy, Away Team? Abort the mission now! And at this point, we've now crashed on the surface of an alien object. Now we move into preparing our dice and placing them into the crew trays. Inside the logbook, there is a breakdown of which dice you're going to grab for each section. Here are the dice that relate to the science section and the recon section. I'll be doing the other two off camera because if you're playing solo, not all four of the sections are going to the planet, but you still want to make sure you have the dice situated inside of the section boxes for future use. It's also worth noting that you'll see brackets around some of the sides of each of the dice and that will also let you know what is the most common side for that particular die so in other words if you roll the die what has the highest odds of landing it is also used for setup it will help you to make sure you have the right dice for each of the sections as depicted in the logbook then simply place the dice inside the crew trays, make sure that the colors match the column colors as well, and if you want to, and I highly recommend this, make sure that the bracket side of the die is facing up. This is going to make your life easier when you're going through checks during the game. You'll be able to quickly look down and see which dice will give you which result more often, and that'll help you to make informed decisions on which dice you should be using during a check to hopefully lean you towards more successes than failures. 
Now head back to that large standard size tutorial deck and you're going to find 12 cards on the top, three relating to each of the sections. Grab the three cards that relate to the crew members or sections that you're bringing to the planet. The rest of them can be removed from the game. Just like that, we have three cards for each of the section crew members. The ones that are not in use have been removed from the game. We also have the large deck here and the small deck, both of which will continue to have cards pulled off the top of them as we go through the tutorial. The next major step is around preparing the planet board. So inside the Planetopedia book, it's a wire bound book. We're gonna open it up to pages two and three, as you can see right here, which is Eye of the Void A. In the top right hand corner, you'll see a unique discovery slot. You're gonna go to your small tutorial deck, take the top card off. It's a unique discovery number one, place it face down there. On the large tutorial deck, you'll find a mission card and you're gonna place that mission card right below it in that top right hand corner. Those cards are now in position. It's also worth mentioning in the bottom right area, you'll see a letter D. This is the area where you're gonna see planet-wide events all around global conditions. Now for this tutorial mission, the global condition to start out with is right here. If anything changes, the tutorial is gonna call upon it. Now on the planet board, you are going to see points of interest printed on the planet itself, like these ones right here, and some of which will not be revealed until you actually go there. Next, we're gonna take the top 12 points of interest cards off the large tutorial deck and place them next to the game board. Finally, take the top four cards from the small tutorial deck and place them face down next to the planet board. How about we move our crew members onto the planet? So at this point, we're gonna choose one of our crew members and place them in sector one one of the planet board. Section numbers are in the bottom right hand corner. I'm gonna have my recon individual go there. My second crew member is gonna be placed in sector two, which is the crash site, and that's my scientist. If you weren't playing solo and there were other players around the table, you're controlling more section crew members, the rest of them would land in sector one. Now we get to reveal the mission card and find out what's in store. Mission regroup. Scattered on separate paths of an enormous alien sphere, we need to find a way to regroup. Objectives regroup in Sector 4. All crew members need to be present in the sector at the same time. So that's our major objective. We have a hint here that states whenever someone enters Sector 4, don't forget to go to the log listed there. And then finally, on completion, when you fulfill the objective, you'll be asked to discard this mission. Now we're gonna go ahead and draw our section cards. It's worth noting that this being the tutorial, you're only dealing with just three cards for each of the section crew members, but as you go along in the gameplay, out far from the tutorials, you're gonna see these decks increase in size. Right now, we go ahead and just draw two cards from the three card deck. Amir and the science section received improvised treatment and calculated risk to start out. And Jay from the recon section received acrobatics and born lucky. It's worth noting that most section cards have two parts. The top contains the main effect of the card and the bottom one shows a dice combination. Anytime you roll your section dice and they match the combination, you can discard the card to claim the bonus. The final step around setup is for your tokens. Make sure they're organized around the planet board, but specifically right now, look for the turn available tokens and just make sure there's one face up next to each crew member with the turn available text showing. Just like that, we have the turn available tokens in place for both crew members. There's also no real need when you're playing solo to use the first player token because, well, you're gonna be controlling a player every single time. You'll be able to designate whether a certain crew member goes first on one given round and that changes in the next round. So there's really no point in using that token. However, if you're playing with other players around the table, you'll certainly want to set that. The other thing I've placed is these reference cards here, Planetary Exploration, as well as the Danger Die. If you flip them over, there's even more reference material on them. Love these as they make things really condensed and easy to follow if you don't want the rule book in front of you and you've got the rules generally down. Keep these within easy reach. At this point we're going to end the setup video and create a divide right here for those that gave me feedback in the prior video that I did saying they only wanted to see how the tutorial was set up to begin with and that's really where they wanted to stop because they wanted a Christmas morning feeling when the game finally arrives. This is really where you want to stop. For those that want to see gameplay 
gameplay and playthrough. I'll be putting up another video in the near future for that. It's also worth mentioning for those that deciding not to watch that, remember, these are still tutorial scenarios, so you're really not spoiling much by checking them out, but I'm leaving that decision completely up to you because I understand your reasoning either way. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Really hope this was informative and helpful, and I'll see you in the next episode as we dive into the playthrough on Eye of the Void. Thanks again for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo.